My goal here is not to explain uh, what bar clamps are or even why you should be interested in them. Uh, I did a presentation at uh, OSCON that's available on my blog that explains how DevOps is different. Uh, bar clamp supports DevOps um, using a layered approach. So when you create a new bar clamp, you're essentially adding a layer into the overall uh, Crowbar deployment infrastructure. And I'll leave it to you to educate yourself on my blog. There is more than enough information about it there. Uh, most of what I'm going to say is also already um, written on my blog and brought and um, in the uh, bar, how to create a bar clamp blog post. I'm going to walk you through the process in video because you're obviously the type of person who likes to watch a video. And I thank you for that. So let me get right to it. Bring up a VM that I have that's running. Um, one of our earlier build versions of Crowbar. But this is enough that I can uh, show you how things are going to work. What I'm also going to do here is jump over and show you this is the crowbar, crowbar running. Here's a list of the bar clamps that are included. I've already played a little bit in this one and created my favorite Foo bar clamp. Um, that bar clamp. And then I'll also show you what happens in Chef Server so you'll get a little bit of idea how all this wires together. The first thing that I always tell people for creating bar clamps is that they are wrappers for Chef cookbooks. So before you create a bar clamp and expect it to do wonderful things, you need to work on a chef cookbook that does wonderful things. Then bring in your chef, then then wrap it with a bar clamp. Uh, this is a crowbar install. I'm going to go to uh, the binary, the bin directory. So part of what happens when crowbar deploys bar clamps, it installs um, components into bin. And uh, so every bar clamp is really going to add things to here. Um, some of these actually come in from the crowbar bar clamp. The ones that start with bar clamp are used for creating and installing bar clamps and then are actually used by the installer to install all the bar clamps that crowbar operates with, including bootstrapping the crowbar bar clamp. So uh, we're going to keep things pretty simple. Um, I've already created a directory called bar clamps. Um, and there's a sample Rackspace bar clamp. If you don't use, if you don't create a directory, that's fine. Um, you can, it'll go into the Dell opt bar clamps. Uh, sorry, opt Dell bar clamps. Directory where all the other bar clamps are. Um, you'll see there's some text files in there that show the files that have been installed, which is part of the installation process for bar clamps. Um, so, uh, one of the reasons why we want to do that is that you could actually use a off server off VM um, path and that would allow you to check into a repo or maintain your bar clamp in a repo and I highly recommend that it's a very good practice uh, everything I'm showing you is intended to be run on the admin server as a super user I'm already as root as you can tell I am going to run the bar clamp create and then I'm going to provide a name for my bar clamp uh, in this case, I'm going to call it video. Uh, I have an option. Every, all the other parameters I'm going to show are optional. I have an option to set my uh, copyright information. So I'm just going to say Rob Hirschfeld here, because that's who I want to hold. I want for the copyright here. And then I'm going to set the path. So if I don't do this, it'll default to um, to the Dell path. But if I include bar clamps like this, it will um, put my new bar bar clamp into that path. It's created it. It's given me the path. Um, and I can see all the files that were done. The magic for creating bar clamps is that there is a, a model bar clamp that is created and included in the crowbar bar clamp. Uh, and as we change and enhance bar clamps, we will be adding things to that model. So let's see what uh, the creator created. So I'm going to go over and visit that bar clamp. And in this bar clamp, you'll see the basic infrastructure of the bar clamp. The bin directory is for shell scripts that your bar clamp might need. The chef directory has the chef infrastructure that is included in uh, every bar clamp. The cookbooks contain the cookbooks, the data bags, the schema files. So this uh, BC template video JSON is what's consumed by Crowbar. It's part of how um, 
this uh, JSON file um, is actually exactly what you edit if you're using Crowbar uh, and it contains the attributes and then the deployment characteristics and, and it links to roles so the thing to point out here is that there's actually a elements elements order the video server in this case it's part of our substitution the video is the name that is injected server is our default role so uh, literally this attribute in the crowbar JSON schema which becomes a data bag in chef is linked directly to the role that will be deployed for this bar clamp those things are, are coupled then the other part is my role so if you look in the roles directory here you'll see the video server role that is going to be created in chef and imported into chef when we install the bar clamp the other components for the bar clamp uh, are the crowbar yaml file that crowbar file that yaml file notice it's put my copyright information in here and set up a name set up a description all this stuff I recommend you change uh, only name is required at this point the crowbar pieces are the layout tells you how the, it tells the installer how the layout is structured the only version currently is one and then the order will it's a future feature that allows us to control the order that bar clamps are added uh, you can actually modify the navigation so this would uh, put a menu item in for the video bar clamp and then you also uh, set the uh, attributes the, the text override so there's we support localization there's a localization file for crowbar and as you install bar clamp uh, with custom UIs it needs to add into the localization file that's exactly what this does this is the English pieces and it supports all the changes and things like that so uh, readme text is just a readme text which I highly encourage you to modify um, github will pick it up automatically and create uh, some markdown for you into the uh, crowbar framework app directory what you'll see in here um, are the controllers models and views uh, the every bar clamp is going to create a controller um, for the most part those controllers are are just shells that override the default controller but this is where you would start extending bar clamps uh, my goal here is not to instruct you on how to do that but there are some great examples throughout the um, other bar clamps that we have available uh, the mod there's same goes same is true for the models in the middle of this the views are a little bit trickier and I want to take a second to show you how that operates so in the view there is a uh, bar clamp and then each bar clamp actually has its own subdirectory that makes uh, keeps us from overloading that one bar clamps directory for the partials and then within this are the partials that are become the custom UIs for bar clamps without these partials which is acceptable to not have them uh, you get the raw view and I can show you what the raw view looks like uh, the, this on error there's a something there's an error in our in this build of crowbar that we have since fixed <laughs> um, so if you override the attributes in the deployment bar clamps uh, they will provide you with um, custom functionality they're set up to take advantage of what is in the model by default which is a foo property uh, and then the one server role that we've got so you can use them as templates um, of course I highly recommend using the other bar clamps as templates uh, so now I'm going to jump back to my yeah. Dell bin directory and Dell bin is is in the past so I could actually run this from anywhere uh, but it's helpful for me to be able to show you what we've got here so here's once again all the bar clamps so now I can take my bar clamp I can install my bar clamp and you can install a bar clamp over and over again I have to provide the path uh, the path is going to inspect to make sure that the crowbar.yaml file is there if it's not it will not act uh, the path does not have to be local to the box you could run it off the network or off a mount or a share uh, and that way bring in bar clamps from anywhere when I do this it's going to run through the installing bar clamp which is going to bring in all the files uh, copy the bin files and then import all of the cookbooks it does not move the bar clamp from where it is it just brings in the pieces that it needs uh, and you can uninstall and it will remove the 
files that it did. It does not, uh, at this point, it does not uninstall from Chef. Uh, so the bark lamp piece will still be in Chef. It's important to note that what you can do with the bark lamp is you can import the same bark lamp over top of the existing one and it will work uh, effectively. So it'll, it will, you will be able to update, change, tweak, and then re-import the bark lamp. That's actually how you would get the bark lamp pieces into, uh, into Chef and the cookbooks and rolls are associated with it. So we've created that bar clamp and that's that's all we have to do to import a bar clamp. This includes bar clamps that um, you've written but also uh, field bar clamps. So if you bring in a bar clamp from somewhere else or want to bring in an update to an existing bar clamp, this is the process you use. Even if you're doing an update to Crowbar itself, uh, that would be a bar clamp. So you can update Crowbar by importing the Crowbar bar clamp and it will patch crowbar. So this is effectively our patching uh, mechanism. And you'll see changes and improvements as we go forward on that. So if I jump back to my, my bar clamps, and I do a refresh here, uh, what you're going to see is there should now be a video. I should have called it AAA video. Uh, here's the video bar clamp that I've just created. Uh, if I'd modified the description, it would have done that. So I can name my proposal and create my proposal here. It says telling me I successfully created the proposal. Here's my proposals. The video bar clamp is right here. I've created that. And then I can come in here. And um, here is the raw view of those attributes. So in that schema file that I showed you, this is exactly what the schema file is. The attributes piece and the under piece. Um, there's actually a bug. <laughs> this is a pretty early version. It's a couple. It's a week old. Um, that is also since fixed. It would show you the attributes that were added. Uh, I'll leave that to you to experiment with because uh, you're just creating a shell bar clamp. You can do that very quickly. Play with it, which I highly recommend doing. The thing to remember is there's now this role. Uh, video server is a role. So if I jump over to the Chef server and look at my roles, I should now find the video server role. It's the role is right here. And this is the data that was added when uh, imported when we imported the role. So all of these pieces, um, here's the video role server, here's the components that I had in that. Monitor actually is the Node.js integration. Um, so I actually can uh, build up my role from, the, uh, from that chef implementation. So that's right here, the data bag. So under Crowbar, what you would find is a BC video, a BC template video, which represents the, here it is, BC template video. This represents the schema. So here's the attributes, video foo, bar. This is what we imported. And when I actually go back and create the, uh, I wish I could spend more time showing you how all this stuff worked. Fortunately, we are out of time. I only have 15 minutes. I hope this has been instructional. Look for more videos about bar clamps in the future. Thank you.